I have never seen this many stars in my entire life. I am here on the edge of a volcano. Why, you ask? Well, because at this point, at this high altitude, I'm away from the air pollution and I'm away from the majority of light pollution, which means I am seeing the universe in its rawest form. I am seeing thousands of stars with my naked eye. And best of all, I am seeing the Milky Way stretch across our night sky. In the 26 years I've been on this planet, I've spent just over 10 of those being interested in astronomy. And I can tell you hand on heart that I have never seen this many stars. I have never been to a place like this. It is surreal. There is truly so much you can see. And the longer you're out here, the longer you let your eyes adjust to the dark environment, well, the more of the universe you unlock, the more you are capable of seeing. And I cannot tell you how exciting that is. I'm Damon Scotting, and this is Astronomical. This is the Bortle Scale. It is a cool way of representing the brightness of the night sky and stars in particular locations. For many of us, light pollution means our skies are suffocated and the number of stars we can observe is greatly reduced. From my backyard, I can see hundreds of stars as my Bortle is only between levels five and six. Despite my avid love for astronomy and traveling, I have never visited somewhere that has a Bortle of one as well as an abundance of clear nights to observe the stars throughout the year. But imagine a place that is relatively warm all year round and located so high off the ground that it's often above the majority of the clouds in our sky. Welcome to the Canary Islands. I've booked an 11 night stay near the top of the volcano and I decided to travel there in style with arguably the UK's best airline, Ryanair. Oh yeah! I've packed two telescopes, four cameras and six lenses for this trip. In fact, in what is an astronomical first, I've finally left to go on a trip where I'm not alone. My little brother has graciously agreed to accompany me on this adventure provided I pay for extra leg room on our flights, which is a win-win. But regardless of how much I packed, there was one thing that I failed to anticipate, and that is the worst thunderstorm the island has faced in over 10 years. A thunderstorm that forced schools to close down on the day we arrived and other flights from less superior airlines to be canceled. So I am here in sunny Tenerife and right now there are thunderstorms going on behind me in that area over there. It is raining, it is really really awful weather altogether, almost tripped over there. Tenerife has over 250 sunny days a year, it's a paradise. It is one of the best places to come in the world for stargazing. It's somewhere I've wanted to come and stargaze for ages. So it's sort of slow, but when I do eventually manage to get here, it's awful, awful weather. It was just thick cloud coming in. Some of the flights have been cancelled on the way here. Thankfully ours hasn't. But now we have a horrible task ahead of us, which is we now need to drive this rental car 6,000 feet above sea level, which is where we're at right now, up a very steep mountain top where it's raining, it's thundering, and there is thick cloud. It is also about 8.30 at night. So less than ideal conditions, but we're going to work with it. We're going to see what we can do. Yeah, this is, uh, <sighs> this is new. Driving a rental car is always a stressful enough situation, but when you couple this with the fact that the steering wheel is on the opposite side as cars in the UK, and you're expected to drive on the other side of the road, it can get even more complicated. Then there's just a small issue of driving up a slippery mountainside where the roads are covered with rocks that have fallen from the cliffs. Yeah, nobody showed this to my mum. Okay, thanks. The storm slowly started to die down over the next couple of days, but the clouds were still thick and enveloping. The only benefit of driving at night was that there were no other cars or people to look out for when on the road. We did use this opportunity to spend a day climbing up to the top of the volcano, but even at this altitude, we were still unable to escape those pesky clouds. This trip was quickly turning into a disaster. I originally planned 11 days, which seemed enough, but the moon was getting more and more illuminated each passing night, meaning the skies would soon be awashed with moonlight. We needed a break in the clouds soon. 
somewhere else. Day four of the trip and we finally had some clear skies and boy were we in a rush to make the most of them. And this is what we finally managed to see. Especially looking that way. Like, that way's really good, but that way's even better now that I've like had a chance in my eyes to calibrate. Behind me, just over there, that's a volcano. I, I couldn't care less. I really couldn't because there are far more fascinating things around me right now than a volcano such as billions of stars. I can see literally thousands with my naked eye and when I use my telescope, I unlock a lot more of our universe and I can see so much more and I cannot tell you how exciting that is. I'm going to share with you some of the shots that I did take. I'll be showing you a live view of what the object looks like for the telescope with just our naked eye to view it. And I'm going to be doing this by adjusting the camera settings to best replicate what our eyes can see. I'm then going to show you a long exposure image of that same object so you can witness all of the miraculous details present that our own eyes cannot quite make out. I have made so many videos during this trip, so if you are interested in learning about astronomy and want to see the adventures involved when trying to capture our cosmos, then subscribe because there is plenty more like this to come. That little cluster of stars just up there is the Seven Sisters. And I'm gonna be honest, from where I live, you can barely tell they're seven because the skies are nowhere near as clear as they are here. They are crystal clear. See that one? That's another meteor that's just gone past. <sighs> the cameras I use throughout this trip are the best in the business when it comes to filming the night sky. But even now, reflecting on the trip as I watch back some of the footage, I'm in disbelief because there were so many more stars visible than you can see in these clips. I remember looking up and thinking that there were more stars than you could possibly count in one night. It was beautiful. For the last three nights of the trip, the moon washed away the majority of stars, meaning instead of imaging stars, nebulae and galaxies, I instead turned the telescope to our more local neighbours and got some excellent shots of our moon, Jupiter and a few of its largest moons, as well as the beautiful, luminous gem of our solar system, Saturn. In fact, thanks to one Spanish lady's lack of spatial awareness during an astronomy talk, I even got an amazing view of Uranus. You normally have to pay a lot of money for a view like that. This video is very much an overview of what's to come in the future as I talk about aliens, the best telescopes to buy, the seven wonders of our night sky, and many more exciting topics. 
I hope you will stick around to see it all with me. Until next time, clear skies. Figure out for ourselves what was really going on with the planets. I'm Damon Scotting, and this is Astronomical. <laughs>